you know, as I changed the childhood memories and, uh, you know, continued to, to change the brain chemistry and all that, eventually, you know, I don't even think of those people anymore. But even if I do, it doesn't matter. It's like, well, if they think that, they think that it really doesn't have any effect on my life at all. It's not like I'm employed by them. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Live Support with Odile for changing negative implicit childhood memories using the Remit method. We've created this forum for those who've watched our videos or read our book um, and need help using the techniques for themselves uh, to get changes, but aren't in a position to do one-to-one -one sessions. So if you're new to the Remit method, be sure to check the description of this video, and you'll also find information on um, getting well, for yourself during these sessions. If you'd like to be here in person, I can work with you, or if you'd like to send in your question, and you can be anonymous if you prefer. All right, so first up today is Camilla. Hi, Camilla. Hi. Hey, how are you today? I'm really good, thank you. Very good. And what can I do for you today? Um. Okay, so I've been trying to post more in my uh, social media for my business mm -hmm. and I feel really uncomfortable so in my face okay. uh, yeah the funny thing is that so at first I felt really uncomfortable and I said okay I don't have to do this if I don't want to and yeah. then after doing some research and seeing other people I felt like really happy and eager to you know so my, so my face and give people advice and all of that. And now that is like actually the moment of doing that, I feel like I don't I don't want to do to do this. Um, I feel scared. And yeah, I need like some help with that, please. All right, very good. And thank you so much for bringing this question because I know that there's so many people who will be able to um, identify with that and who will benefit from this as well. So um, first of all, let's find out what it is that you're worried about. So what's uh, the, when you think of showing your face for social media, where does your mind go? What do you think of? It goes to no one, like what's in my content and mm -hmm. feeling like, like a failure, like I'm not good enough. Okay, very good. And two questions. First of all, how do you know you're not good enough? I mean, it's obviously not related. What I want to do is answer the logic first. And then, because we know, of course, it's coming definitely coming from childhood uh, stuff. But when you think of, I'm not good enough, in what way do you think you're not good enough? What makes you think you're not good enough? Um, because other people, they have like good results with social media. And if I don't have those results, I'm not going to know why, and I'm going to feel like, oh, it's because it's it's me, you know? It's oh, me. very good. Yes, good job, sweetheart. That's excellent. And then the second question, and it's kind of related, is what do you think those people are going to think of you? So when you imagine they're, you know, they're watching your content, what do you think they're thinking or feeling? Probably nothing. And maybe that's like the worst, not the worst part, but mm -hmm. the, the fact that it's like, I don't exist or I'm like invisible mm -hmm. to them, you know? Okay. And so knowing the little bit about, the little bit I do about your childhood with your mum, that makes sense, right? Does that feel familiar? Um, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I figured. Yeah. So not being important, not existing, and then also not knowing what's wrong and it must be me yeah <laughs> right yeah very really. good <laughs> good job all right so so let's check that now so when you think of your child your childhood the little you with your mom with your mom what's there memories are there or thoughts or feelings um yeah so I realized that for me it's like a knowing more than like an image so okay. for the longest time, I was trying to find like an image or like hearing something. But for me, it's always like a knowing. 
and like kind of like the face of my mom but it's like that inner realizing of oh i'm not good enough oh this oh that yes very good and again thank you because i know that a lot of other people will be able to relate to that as well so a lot of people don't have visual but they just have a knowing so that's that's yeah. great to to be able to um address that so um and, and so you've you've got this knowing and you can see your mum's face and you you've you have that knowing that you're not good enough and can you tell me the expression on your mum's face um yeah so i don't know how to express her face but she's not relaxed and happy oh, okay. she's like like analytical like analyzing like you know Yes. Okay. So, um, so you've got your mum in front of you, and there's the little you. And I want you to notice that inside your mother is like a, a a visual thing. And I know you said you don't have a visual, but just however you know it. In other words, you just know that there's something in her that is like a dark um, patch. Can yeah. you imagine that? Yes. So, however you can know that that's there so there's a dark patch and that is the cause of whatever's going on mm. so it's not you it's that she's got this dark patch in her yeah you get that okay mm. so there's that dark patch in her and she's saying to you look I've got this dark patch so mm. she's telling you what's wrong with her so she's not leaving you to guess yes how would that feel first? It feels better. Um, I feel compassion for her because she's the one carrying that and it has nothing to do with me and everything to do with her. Yeah. Very good. Good job, sweetheart. And now we want to, we want to do two versions of this and see, you know, they may both be useful or you may just prefer one. Um, first one, I want you to imagine that little you has a magic wand and you wave the magic wand and you are able with that magic wand to make that dark patch go away. You can shine light into it or it just dissipates, however you would like to imagine it. And your mother's relieved. So she, it's like she's been under a curse. So she hasn't been herself. And she's like, when she goes, oh, thank you so much. And she's free to be her authentic self. Can you imagine that? Yes. But I don't know how her authentic self would be then. Okay, very good. And so the, her authentic self will be the same as who we all are, which is light and unconditional love. So if you imagine, and here's the thing, you know, for, for everybody, whether you actually believe this or not, or, you know, whatever beliefs you have, um, it doesn't matter if it's true or not. This is we, the, uncon, un, the unconscious part of the brain can't judge something as unrealistic, can't tell the difference between reality and imagination. So as we imagine things, um, the, the, uncon, the unconscious part of the brain will accept it and believe it as long as we, it doesn't contain contradicting memories, in which case you can just change those. Um, and as long as you aren't constantly um, consciously saying, but that's not really true. So imagine that every one of us, all of us, each person is a light, um, you know, being of light and unconditional love. That's who we really are. And then we are conditioned through childhood with all of these issues, all of these programs, all of these um, coping mechanisms and survival techniques that make us you know, who we, who we are, uh, the personalities. So your mum is also this amazing uh, being of light and unconditional love. That's her essence. And then her childhood and her life has created this. Um, my sister and I used to, when we were talking about our mother, we would say it's her costume. <laughs> so she's wearing like a, you know, like a costume, playing a character kind of thing, but it's not the real person. It's not the real. Does that yeah. make sense so far? Yeah, absolutely. Very good. So the the person that you experienced um, growing up and the person who you are experiencing in this memory of knowing is the character. It's not the real being. It's not your real mother. Mm. And so now you're lifting that curse. The costume is falling away. 
Yes. Can you imagine that? Yeah, I definitely can like imagine her like more relaxed and like happy and being like funnier. Very good. Good job. And I want you to keep practicing seeing her that way or imagining her that way because you know, doing it right now, as I say, can you imagine that? And you say, yeah, I can, I can imagine that. That is just connecting those, that pattern of neurons once. And in order for those neural um, networks, those connections to become more established, it need, they need to fire in that pattern over and over until those connections become established. So it's like the way we learn times table or anything by repetition. So that's why we need to keep playing that scene with feelings over and over to establish it. And then it will start to feel easier, more, uh, your brain will accept it more readily and it'll, the, the good feelings will be stronger. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. and I know you know most of that, but I, I was just covering that for, for others yeah. as well. <laughs> it's okay. So yeah. yeah, just to clarify for for new people as well, and so uh, so keep imagining just that one moment in time. So we don't even need like long memories or anything. Just that one moment in time of that little you with your mum, and that you can imagine that bright light shining out from her. Mm. Okay, so that's that's that one piece. The other piece I wanted to do is where instead of you, so you've got the one where you with the magic wand, you lift the curse. Second one, um, do it where you don't have to. He comes out of it herself. Either she frees herself or another adult frees her. Can you imagine that? Yes. Good. So that's addressing two pieces of data there. The first one was empowering that little you to make changes to her own world and her own and everybody in it. So that's that one piece of data there. And then the second piece is the piece of data that says you are not responsible for anybody. You don't have to do anything. Things happen for you. Mm. And the adults take responsibility and make things happen. Yeah, that feels really good. <laughs> yeah, it's very good. So we want those two there. So again, you know, practice them and establish them. Okay. So now let's look at, um, can you create a scene where you are doing something that is not good? So it's like, you don't, you know, you forget something or you're not sure of what you're doing or kind of, um, kind of situation that, would be stressful for you and that your mother would normally um, judge. Yeah. Okay. Very good. So now I want you to imagine that your mother, so she's judging, she's saying or doing whatever she used to do. And then that curse is lifted and she kind of wakes, she goes, mm, I'm so sorry. I don't know what I was doing. And she hugs you and she reassures you. And she tells you that that was something else that that wasn't me. I love you no matter what. Can you imagine that? Yes, I could. Good. good, very good. And then we want to create a scene where you're doing whatever that was and your mom immediately is in that state of unconditional love. And it doesn't matter what you do. She just loves you for existing. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's really important. Like that piece, because I was like taking notes the other day about this and I have... Here, I uh, wrote down uh, the feelings of this, and the feelings are overwhelmed and despair. Yes. Yes, it makes so much sense. Because from very little, you were in that position, in that you were in that um, environment where you didn't know what was going on. The only explanation was it was you, it must be something wrong with you. Yeah, absolutely. And that is a normal. Um, a natural tendency for children because you know all children everything it seems to be can, about them and caused by them you know that's the way the brain works so that's why children who's you know uh, their parents have divorced very often blame it on themselves you know they think it, it must be something I said yeah did. and that's because that's that's the brain you know everything outside of me is about me and that's okay. survival mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, okay. So now we've got that. 
Now, having established that, so of course you want to practice that until, until it's all established and you've so that every time you think of your mother as it, when you were a child, you've got that, um, you can imagine her smiling, she's calm, she's fully focused on you and she's reassuring you and you can feel she loves you no matter what. You could go and kill someone and she would love you. Right. <laughs> That's, okay. So it, it's truly unconditional love and it doesn't matter what you do. All right. So that's what we're aiming for. Then whenever you think of uh, doing social media, showing, showing your face on camera, I want you to immediately play that straight away, play that your mum being like that with you. Mm. Okay. And uh, so another piece here is um, I love the fact that you told yourself you don't have to do it um, in the beginning. So that's perfect. I would keep that. So I would say, I don't have to do it. And then think about doing it. You're not going to do it, but you're just going to imagine doing it and notice what happens inside you and immediately play that new, those, you know, one of those new memories of your mother so that your brain starts to connect showing your face on social media with that feeling of being loved unconditionally by your mom. Makes sense? Yeah. So good. yeah um, I, for me, um, it has been really like life changing that aspect. And you mentioned this, like, like, I think it was like, even like years ago. And it, you know, it just stick with me. The thing that you don't have to do it, yes. but so for me, what I want is to reach a place where I feel completely like neutral about it. Like yes. it's okay if I do, it's okay if I don't, but yes. it's not about being triggered yes. about memories. It's about, you know, choosing what I that's want. That's it. Absolutely. That's, that's exactly what you're aiming for. So good job, sweetheart. And, and um, you know, and then from a time when you, you're actually enjoying it where you're looking forward to it because it's fun. Yeah. So I know in the beginning when I started uh, my very first Facebook Live, I, I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to do any social media. I also, right in the very beginning um, of Facebook and all of that, I didn't want to show my face on camera. And I was hyper yeah. vigilant or hyper aware of yeah. certain people that I knew yeah. in my life and what they would be thinking. Yeah. And I was, that's all I thought of was those people seeing me and judging. And, um, you know, as I changed the childhood memories and, uh, you know, continued to, to change the brain chemistry and all that, eventually, you know, I don't even think of those people anymore. But even if I do, doesn't matter it's like well if they think that they think that it really doesn't have any effect on my life at all it's not like I'm employed by them yeah absolutely yeah so that's what you're aiming for so good job and um and then you know once you've got to so that, that really is the beginning is establishing those memories with your mum and then you know just saying to yourself don't have to do it but just think about it and think about it and notice what happens inside you and immediately practice the um those memories with your mum so what you're doing is like when we um house train a puppy every time the puppy goes to pee on the floor you pick it up and put it outside over and over and eventually the puppy's brain connects needing to pee with being outside and then he automatically he wants to pee he needs to be outside he, he automatically wants to go outside so mm -hmm. we're doing the same thing with this showing my face on social media my mom loves me unconditionally and you can feel and then the more you amp up those feel good feelings of course the the, the um, stronger that will be and eventually you your brain will connect showing your face on social media and helping others in that way with this wonderful feeling of being loved unconditionally. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds amazing. And I am like really excited. And um, not only for like posting and not posting, but for being able to like, being able to control my perspective on things, you know, for the freedom. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's such a good point, Camilla. Yeah. Good job, sweetheart. I'm so excited for you. And I'm so excited for all those who are going to benefit from your social media point, uh, posts eventually as well. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. Very for good. You're very welcome, sweetheart. Good job.